connecting with you because I was so dissatisfied with my um, LSAT score. Much like yourself, I felt like I had been studying for a while just to no avail get the score that I received. And I mean, I don't mind being transparent. I think I, I, I'll be honest with you, I uh, deleted my score um, off my report, but I think I scored like a 148 and I have been studying since last September. Um, and not to make excuses, but like so much has transpired between now and then. So I kind of feel like I shouldn't have taken it, but I wanted to kind of take it just to see where I was. Um, and yeah, I'm just desperate. Well, not desperate, but desperate. <laughs> uh, I understand. I understand that feeling. I, I get what you mean. Is there a particular target test that you have in mind going forward? Um, so I am currently re uh, scheduled for the October test, but I'm willing if necessary to see where I am, if I need to push it back, I am applying in this cycle though. So I can, you know, be admitted in the fall of 2022. So thus far October, but depending on where I am. Yeah. You can do October. You can do November. You can do any test date for the next several months and still right. apply this cycle. And right. applying early matters much less than it used to. So I'd say, don't rush it. Don't feel like you need to rush it. If October is too soon, you want to do November, that's fine. You want to do January, it's totally fine also, even February. So right. I would just look to see what can we do to maximize the time that you have, whether it's three months, four months, five months, whatever it might be. Right. Okay. Good tips. Good tips. I appreciate that. Um, so since I am a retest taker, um, I'm interested to see um, what you think would be a great plan of attack. I definitely know where I feel short and which was kind of weird to me because like when I was prepping my practice test, like I was scoring in the higher like 150s and 60s. But I know on test day, um, I made the mistake of misreading a rule for logic game and it was a multilinear game and I went back and fixed it. And so that took away time from the two remaining problems when I know I could have gotten those answers correct because like I shared like prior to that, I was, if, the, if I had any hope or confidence in any section on the test, it was definitely logic games. And I feel like that's where I bombed when I went back and, you know, fixed something. But outside of that, I don't know. I just, I don't know. I just feel incomparable, honestly. I don't even, it's just, yeah. Well, let's, let me ask you this because logic games, you. I, fe I think you know what to do there. It just could be a matter of double checking the rules, making sure you got your setup right before diving in. But I'm curious about what got you to be so solid in logic games in the first place that that's really the only quick fix you might need. How did you build your logic games foundation? It was really just uh, consistency and repetition and um, really just taking the time to understand what was being said, even though obviously <laughs> I kind of failed on test day. Um, but I, I grew to love it. I was a math lover in school. And so even though it's not similar, well, the, the theory or the, the practice behind it is kind of similar to math, like, you know, being able to solve equations with limited information and being able to take that limited information and being able to create different scenarios. So I think just consistency, really. Um, I also enjoyed logical reasoning and, and reading comp in a different way. LR was like my second strongest section, but I will say that I never really had a true understanding for how to decipher sufficient from necessary. And I think I was so adamant from the previous program that I used to use the rule that they told us to use when it came to um, like the negation test for necessary, for example, and, and fa it falling apart to where I got so, you know, hell bent on doing that, that I really don't think I understood what the questions were asking. I was just really trying to put that rule forward. And so just, um, you know, yeah, I think just practice and consistency really. Okay. So practice and consistency that can apply across all sections, all question types, right? Mm -hmm. But the formulaic approach, the mathematical mindset that got you solid on logic games, that isn't going to, is, isn't what's going to get you solid on logical reasoning and reading count, right? There's a fundamental difference in the nature of those sections. So it may that actually be that we need to move away from the formulaic approach. Negation right. is a great tool, but it does not apply in every single situation, not even for every single necessary assumption question. Right, right, okay, okay, I agree. And I will say, um, just from what I've seen thus far, I'm super impressed by your program. 
and I kind of I, I believe everything happens for a reason but in my mind it's kind of like damn I wish I oh, sorry. was like dang I wish I would have found this sooner which I was subscribed to your newsletter while I was studying in my other program and so I was reading it back and forth I was like Jesus I should have I should have subscribed to him but hey I'm here now right I'm glad to have you on board. I'm excited. You've got, <laughs> you've got, you've got a, a ton of resources available to you. Right. If you want to work on sufficient necessary or necessary assumption questions, we've got plenty on that in the course. We have several lessons, full length class recordings on each of those topics in right. depth, if you want to explore them more. And then we have all the live class sessions too. Yes. Yes. So I think my biggest question is what should I do? Should I start over? Should I just reteach myself everything? Should I watch your videos? Like what should I do? Well, it sounds like, I don't want to tell you that you have to redo everything. And I don't think that you need to, it sounds like logic games. You're feeling pretty solid on that. If it's just a question of adding an extra step to double check things that could propel you to a top score in the logic games area, then try that out. If you still feel you need more on a certain game type, of course, I've got material on that, but I'm more interested in helping you get solid on logical reasoning since you mentioned that the most. And so I would say, look at the logical, logical reasoning foundational videos, look at the full length class recordings, come to class, ask questions, go to the study groups, take full advantage of it and know that you don't have to do it all tomorrow. You've got months available ahead of you. You could spend a few weeks with an LR emphasis, a few weeks with a reading comp emphasis, pull it all together with full length timed exams and see how your practice test scores are stacking up as October approaches or as November approaches. Right. I think that's probably what my biggest um, issue was. I was so busy with rushing um, that I probably missed the steps along the way that was super vital, like a foundation, because I feel like once you have a foundation, you're good. And I think I might have missed the foundation part of it. And I, I like how thorough your your videos are, even with when it comes to the specific games, like nobody's program that I've seen thus far has broken down the game types within the ordering games. So I really love that. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. So I think I'll, yeah, I'll definitely do that. Fantastic. Fantastic. Great. Anything else okay. I could support you on today? Um, I think that was pretty much it. I just wanted to know where to start. <laughs> I just, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm kind of desperate at this point. Well, not desperate in a bad way, but, you know, I'm hungry and I, I want to do better because I know I'm capable of doing better. Um, no, I, I was thinking the same thing. I, I sense like a hunger and a dedication, a commitment on your part. You're willing to give it the time that it needs and you've gotten the resources. And so if you're looking for exactly where to start specifically, I'd say the logical reasoning foundational material, just eat that up, consume it, go through all of it. The videos are on the foundational section are bite-sized to help you get jump started there and make some forward motion. And then when you want to go deeper on a particular area, like maybe necessary assumption or conditionality, then you can go over to the workshop section and get those full length class recordings. And of course, Should you I can also go to the live classes too. Sorry, I cut you off. Should I be straying away from time right now? Not being so concerned about time and just really just taking the time necessary to make sure I understand before I start timing myself with practice. Okay. Yeah, in the foundational um, phase of your prep, I would focus on the accuracy. Okay, perfect. And I know you recommend three hours max for people who are full-time employees. Um, should I be studying three times, excuse me, three hours a day, or is there a way that I should exceed that? Um, should some days I come to class and not work at, focus on practicing and pick up practice in the next morning, or is it really up to my discretion? It's up to your discretion, but what you okay. laid out sounds appropriate. So- Let's say there's, let's say we have logical reasoning class on Thursdays, for example, if you want to work right. on logical reasoning, then your study time that day, let's say you go to work or you have work during the day, I'm just laying that out as a possibility. Then Thursdays at night, instead of doing practice tests or individual sections, you do whatever problems they're going to cover in class that day, or you mm -hmm. come to the logical reasoning study group before class, then go to the class. And that could be your study time that day. Then let's say Tuesdays are logic games class. You feel like you don't need to work on logic games as much. You don't need to go to class that day. Instead, maybe you do some logical reasoning or reading work. But yeah, I think that if you're working a standard job, like nine to five-ish or whatever, eight hours a day of work, you don't need to try and do four or five hours of studying in the same day. Save yeah. more of that for the weekend. <laughs> save more of that for the weekends. That was my, my, my hiccup too. It was just a lot, but it's okay. Better late than never. And where do I access this, the, the class schedule? So the class schedule is on the sidebar of the workshops section of the course.
Okay. We've also got a walkthrough video at the beginning of the course, kind of navigating it with a screen share to show you where everything is. Okay. Well, I'm going to go to class today. Awesome. I'm going to go to class today. Well, thank you. This was very reassuring for sure. I, I, I feel hopeful now. So thank you. Awesome. I'm excited. I'm glad to have you on board. Reach out if you have any questions or need anything. I'm happy to help. Likewise. Thank you. Have a great e Oh, not evening, Lord. I'm already in the evening already. Have a great morning. <laughs> of course. You too, Melody. Have a good one. Thank you. Bye-bye. Thanks for tuning into the show. Please subscribe if you haven't done so already to be notified of new episodes as I release them. And feel free to reach out if you need anything at all as you move forward with your prep. I'm happy to help however I can. In the meantime, I wish you all the best and take care.